Well, my name is Lillian Simon, but I go by Tibby because I've always been called Tibby by my family and everybody who knows me because that, my maiden name was Tibble. I can't, I can't quite, I'm trying to think back how it happened. I don't remember who, who uh, but it was Sophie who came down to see me. Oh yeah, I was still working for Bill DeMint at that time. And uh, so Sophie came down to my little office and to see me and to ask me if I was interested and I didn't even, I hadn't even thought about it, you know. So I said yes. The more I thought about it, the more I liked the idea. And especially since we were setting up the program, you know, up until then, it was just the very beginning of it. The, the committee had been, had been formed. Well, I was the, sec, uh, the academic secretary, they called it. And my boss was Sophie Alway. And she, her husband was Bob Alway, who was the president of uh, the medical school. Or what are, I guess they call it president of the medical school. Anyway, he was the top guy there. And Sophie, she had been a pediatrician, but she no longer was practicing medicine. And she had five children. And uh, so, she, so she decided, or she was asked if she would like to take this job as program director, you know, at that time, for this very first program. And uh, of course, nobody knew whether it would succeed or not. You know, it wasn't because it, was it was brand new. She, she, was, um, she was a very, very nice, kind woman, very, and very intelligent, of course. And uh, the kids all liked her, too. They were very fond of her. And she worked under a Norman Kretschmer. And she, she was there for perhaps, she and I, we just got along beautifully. And she was setting up all the programs, you know, the student, uh, we had to have a counseling program. So they were able to get Don Kennedy to, to become the director, and he was wonderful. He had such rapport with the kids, you know, and uh, everybody got along well with him, and I thought he was great, and he accepted me. And so, the kids all loved him, you know, they were, always, they were always wanting to have parties so he would come, you know, <laughs> that sort of thing. And he was very good, he gave good advice to them as well, you know. He, he was on to everything. When he, when he, even though he had so many things to think about, he would concentrate on whatever problem there was right there at that moment. He was very good about doing that. And I was always so busy because the kids were coming in and out of the office all the time asking for this, that, or the other, you know, because we were a very small crew then. It wasn't a big department. It was just I and Sophie. And so they came to me because they couldn't go to Don for, some, for just ordinary stuff. So they'd come and ask me all these questions. They all loved to come into the office and tell me what they were going to be doing next and, you know, at the beginning of school because they all loved being in the program and they, it was wonderful when in the second year they could declare a major and then they decided on human biology. And they, there was a lot of haranguing, you know, because they all, each had a different point of view about it, not each, but many of them, and wanted this or that program to be, or subject to be more important than another. But I think that they finally ironed it all out and, and it turned out to be, you know, it was either science or behavioral or um, social, I guess. I, I can't remember now exactly how they had it. So many of these kids couldn't be sure which one they wanted to concentrate on. And that way it gave them more, more scope so that they could finally decide, you know. Some of them didn't decide until they were juniors what, what they wanted to concentrate on, I know. But, um, you know, it just, everything went so well with the students in most cases because they were all so mature by the time they got to be seniors, you know. They really matured beautifully. And then there were all these wonderful new attractive programs going on. The, in the uh, public affairs things. They got, they loved those new programs that were brought in, you know, for 
to, uh, many of them wanted to not, they weren't interested in, in uh, medical, but they wanted to be part of perhaps the uh, politics. So a lot of them took a, took a, year, a six, a, a quarter or, or a half year in uh, different parts of the world. Of course, now it's even more <laughs> involved than it was in those days. In those days, it was exciting to go away like that because you didn't have all the kind of instant communication that we have today. Well, the, there was that one program where they went to Africa and were kidnapped. I remember Steve Smith and uh, I can't think of the girl's name now, but she was lovely. There were about four or five of them, and they were actually kidnapped and held, and it was quite terrifying, you can imagine. See, they were very, very um, determined, and they didn't like having those kids there. They didn't understand what they were doing. They, I think they thought they might be some kind of spies, which of course they weren't, you know. And uh, so what happened? Well, they were not well treated and they came home look, looking pretty bedraggled and the, and of course all the all the parents were concerned about their kids you know what was going to happen to them but luckily nothing bad happened to any of them they may have a few psychological scars i don't know but they seemed to be okay when they came home i remember when they would go for to, for the lectures i used to go sometimes to listen to when it was a new the beginning of the class, you know, I'd go over to the big, um, whatever the big lecture hall was then, I don't know now. That was when a dog, people, everybody had a dog, all these students, and this big dog went up on the stage and did a big dump. And, and everybody was astounded, but this, this, I'm trying to think, oh, Clayton, did you know him? Mm -hmm. Anyway. He looked down and looked up. He was a British, you know, and he said, well, I don't think I can top that. <laughs> so then, of course, I had to clean it up before he could even talk. <laughs> it was pretty funny, though. Everybody, of course, had brought, brought the house down. You know, nobody was going to pay any attention to a lecture at that point. Yeah. Were there lots of dogs in the class? Oh, there were so many dogs. They, that when whoever wanted to have a dog and could afford to have one had a dog. In the dorms, they would have their own In the dogs. dorms and brought them to all the classes, you know, and the dogs were allowed to run free. I don't know, it didn't, they didn't let it last too long, but they did, they did have that going on, you know. It was really very, the nicest thing that happened to me with them, with the students, was the year that, that, uh, when they were graduating, the graduating class, we always had to have a big ceremony, of course, as st they still do, I'm sure, where you have all the, the units counted up to make sure they have enough to graduate. <clears throat> and so I was helping them, advise, advise, not advising them, cautioning them about being sure they had all of them, you know. And then at the end of, and then we gave out the, the diplomas, the, I handed them to the, chairman and then he handed them to the kids you know I think that was the way it went I can't remember exactly but everybody or the kids all just were so thrilled to be graduating you know and <laughs> ready to go and of course they would throw all their hats up in the air and and uh, but but at the end of this particular class which was 78 I think the kids all the students all got up stood up and said Hip, hip, hooray, Tibby. And it was so surprising and so lovely, you know, because I had a really great rapport with most of the ch children, the students, they weren't children, of course, with most, most of the students, and I li liked all of them. The atmosphere was always lovely in human biology. I don't know if it's still as nice as that, but it always was then. It was just it was just a good place to be alive, I think, is the way the kids felt and the way I felt about it, you know. And I think the professors all enjoyed it, too, because the, the students were mostly so eager to learn, you know, because they were so enthusiastic about what was going on in their lives. When they all, they all seemed to, although they, of course, didn't know one another because they came from different 
areas and lived in different dorms or wherever they lived. But they all seemed to enjoy being together. They didn't, you know, there was no feeling that it was this set group and that group. They were just all there. You know, I remember once they invited us, me and my husband both went over, they invited us to go to a, they were doing the, the uh, show Hair. And you know, at the, in it, the kids all take all their clothes off. Well, of course, that was a tremendous shock to me. And, and I don't know if there were any other adult people there. But that was, that was, but in those times, they did things like that, you know. <laughs> it was very funny. This was at Story House? It was one of, I don't know which one, it was a theme house. It's for that picture with me with the, and the but you know, the kids, they didn't feel self-conscious or embarrassed about this, but, but I was. You know, there's my kitty. Amiga, what are you up to, huh? Oh no, Amiga. <laughs> and of course, I rode my bicycle to work every day. That's why I kept fit, fit I think, because I've always ridden a bike and, until I was 82, and then I quit. But, um, but I used to see them, and they used, Sandy used to ride his bike to work, too. Oh, I think most of them did. And their bicycles were always stolen because nobody locked bicycles then. And, <laughs> and they'd have their bicycle out there. And people didn't really steal them. They just wanted transportation and then they'd leave it somewhere else, you know, but not where it was. <laughs> when I remember one of, the, one of the students came in just crying because she had a brand new beautiful bicycle and it was gone. But of course she got it back eventually, but, but it was gone before, because somebody just, everything was so casual. You know, they all had that awful long hair sticking out all. <laughs> You know, that was the style, to, to either have no hair at all or to have this, this big, bushy, afro kind of, of hair that they all liked to. And of course their clothes, anything went, you know, they could wear anything they wanted to school.